Inserting links into your Microsoft PowerPoint presentation can make it much more interesting and interactive. You can also create links to individual slides in your presentation from other documents. The simplest way to insert a link in your presentation is to simply copy the address of the page you want to link to and paste it to your slide. In most cases, PowerPoint should be able to recognize that the pasted text contains a link and format the inserted text properly. When you then show your presentation in presentation mode, you will be able to click on the link to open the page it refers to. The text representing the link will be the title of the page it refers to. If you want to change the text, you can simply right-click on the link and choose Edit Link. This will bring up a dialog where you can change the text of the link and also change the address it points to. You can also remove the link if you want by clicking on Remove Link. It is interesting to see that Microsoft is a bit inconsistent with their naming convention. In most places in PowerPoint they use the notion of link, but this dialog is called Edit Hyperlink. This is a leftover from older versions of PowerPoint. But now link and hyperlink are used as synonyms. In this dialog you can also define a screen tip for the link. Screen tip is the small pop-up that shows when you hover your mouse over various objects. It usually contains some text explaining what this object does or what to do with it. The text you enter here will show when you hover your mouse over the link. Another way of inserting links is to use the insert menu. There, in the links section, you can find the link button. If you click on it, you will see the list of recently used documents and also web addresses if they have been copied to the clipboard. To create a link, just click the item you want to link to. If you do this when your cursor is in an empty space, PowerPoint will create a link and add the text to describe the linked object. It will usually be the title of that object. However, if you do that while your cursor is in some text or if you mark some text, then PowerPoint will create a link to the object you selected, but will keep the text that was there under the cursor. This is a good way if you want to make your text more user-friendly, but still want to be able to use links. You can also do it with other objects like shapes or pictures. Just mark the object you want to have the link attached to and repeat the same procedure. Also, instead of clicking through the menu, you can press Ctrl-K to create a link. If you want to create a link to an object that is not visible in the list showing when you click on the link button in the insert menu, you can click on the insert link option at the bottom of the list. This will open the dialog we have seen previously. Apart from all the options discussed before, in this dialog you can specify the address of the web page or the file you want to link to. By default, the dialog shows you the contents of the current folder which makes it easy for you to pick files. However, if you click on Browse Pages, you will see a list of the pages you visited recently. Unfortunately, the list is a bit inconsistent because it doesn't really show all your browsing history, especially if you are using a different browser than Edge, but only those addresses which PowerPoint sees. The same goes for recent files. The list is maybe more consistent, but you see the addresses of the files and not their names, so it is more difficult to understand which file is which. Additionally, you can find some files also in the Browse Pages section. You can also create a link to another place in your document. You do it by either clicking on the bookmark button on the right hand side of the screen or picking the place in this document option from the list on the left. If you have bookmarks in your document, they will be visible here. If you pick Create New Document, you'll be able to create a link to a new document which doesn't exist yet. Here you will be able to specify the name and the folder for the new file and also decide whether you want to edit the newly created document now or just save it to work on it later. If you select the option to edit it now, PowerPoint will create a link and immediately open that file for editing in another window. Interestingly enough, that file will not use the default formatting used in your original file. If you select the option to add the newly created document later, PowerPoint will only add the link. To edit your file, you can either open it from Windows Explorer or via PowerPoint's file open functionality, but you can also control click on the link. 
this will open the file behind the link. Finally, you can also insert a link to an email address. This dialog will allow you to specify the email address and the subject of the email to be created, so when you click on the link you will get an empty email with the provided address and subject. There seem to be really few scenarios when this is usable. In the end, why would you start writing an email by showing a presentation? Apart from inserting links to other documents or web pages into your presentation, you can also create links to particular slides in your presentation to be inserted elsewhere. For instance, if you write an email where you want to draw the reader's attention to some particular slides, it can be helpful to create a direct link to help them find the right slide. To create a link to a particular slide in your presentation, it has to first be saved in the cloud so that sharing is possible. Then you simply have to right-click on the slide you want to create a link to and pick link to the slide. Then simply go to the application you want to insert this link to and insert it there. In this example we will insert this link in our email but you can do it in other applications too. This is especially useful when you continue working on your presentation. Even if the number of the slide you want the reader to check changes, they will always be directed to the right slide. If you on the other hand only write please check slide x in your email and then the slide number changes, the reader would get confused. Hopefully this video gives you a good overview of how to work with links in Microsoft PowerPoint. Check our other videos to learn more about various Office applications.